As I've mentioned in my previous videos, my background is in production, specifically live sound and more recently film and video. In both of these arenas, nearly every project that I've been a part of, whether I knew it or not, used a waterfall approach to planning and executing the project. Until I started working at Team Gantt, I had never even heard the term Agile, at least not as it relates to project management methodologies. Though, to be fair, I hadn't heard of waterfall as a methodology either. For most of my career, I only viewed projects linearly. There was a series of steps or tasks that had to be completed before the next series of steps or tasks could begin. And if at some point in the project a big change was made, we might have to go all the way back to the beginning and redo some number of those initial tasks and then hope that any work we had done past that point was still usable. It usually wasn't, at least not entirely. This worked well because in film and video production, you're not worrying about delivering anything early or often. You're headed towards the release of a single complete deliverable, the movie or documentary or episode. All the decisions are made up front, and then they're executed meticulously in order. The end result is a summer blockbuster, or at least a respectable showing at a festival, hopefully. The point is that for projects like that, Waterfall makes the most sense because every part of the project builds on the previous in a predictable way. The idea becomes a script, then storyboards, which leads to locations being chosen. Then the art department comes in and does their magic to create the visual world of the story. After that, the grip and electric department come in and get everything lit. The camera teams get the cameras set up and ready to roll while the actors are in hair and makeup. Finally, the director calls action and the movie magic begins. Some of those tasks can happen concurrently and some are dependent on others finishing first. The sets can't be lit until they're built or dressed and they can't be built or dressed until the location or sound stage is chosen. You get the idea. Even once the shooting has wrapped, there's still months of work to be done and it usually happens in a waterfall method. The assistant editors get all the footage and start building rough sequences. Then the editor starts cutting what will become the final film. Once there's a rough cut, some of the visual effects can start and the sound mixers can start getting everything crisp. I could keep going here, but I think you get the idea. Unlike movies, things like software development don't need to be tackled quite so head on. The project teams also don't necessarily need to have all the details before they can begin working. Sure, there are some key details that need to be planned out, and spoiler, this part is usually done in a very waterfall method, likely on a Gantt chart. But once they know what their tech stack will look like, they can at least start building the back end of the application and begin testing it. Agile workflows generally work in sprints, usually a two to four week chunk of time where the goal is to deliver a working product, or at least part of it. Sprint planning enables the team to estimate tasks and determine what work they'll take on in the sprint backlog, which essentially serves as the task list for the next sprint. Then there's a daily check-in where the team gets together to talk about what they worked on yesterday, what they're doing today, and if there are any blockers in their way. At the end of a sprint, there's a sprint review. In this meeting, the whole team sits down with product owners to review or demo work done in the sprint and get feedback or approvals. Finally, there's the sprint retrospective where the team talks through what worked and what didn't in the last sprint. Everyone commits to making changes together to improve communication, collaboration, and even deliverables to make future sprints go more smoothly. Once all that is complete, the process starts all over again and continues until the project is ready to launch. This approach was designed for and works really well with software development, but it's taken other industries and project types by storm in the last couple of years. In some cases, it's worked out really well, and in others, there have been growing pains. Let me stop here for a second and say that there's no wrong methodology for a project. Find what works best for your team and your stakeholders and run with it. If you find that planning to build the next killer app in a pure waterfall approach works for you and your team, then go for it. And if you want to plan the next Citizen Kane in two-week sprints, by all means, knock yourself out. All of that said, it seems pretty rare these days to find a project that's pure agile or pure waterfall. There's almost always a hybrid approach and for good reason. Let's take a look at some of the strengths and weaknesses of both agile and waterfall approaches. Clear and complete documentation. The fact that waterfall produces detailed project requirements means every piece of your project will be well-defined and documented. If someone wants to change a requirement, discuss it head on because scope and budget will always be affected. Solid estimates set clear expectations. 
Most waterfall project leaders will create a work breakdown structure of all tasks and subtasks. That detailed estimate can then translate to a firm project scope that correlates to a detailed project plan, creating very clear expectations about timing and scope. Visual project plans are easy to understand. Creating a waterfall project plan is fairly straightforward because projects run in a linear manner with defined dependencies and responsibilities. Plus, the division of steps and tasks is simple to interpret. This makes planning your team's time easier and leads to a clear end date. It's easy to measure the impact of project changes. While it's difficult to make up for changes or missed deadlines, it's easy to determine the impact of a change and quickly make adjustments, though that does usually mean your deadline will be affected. Communicating progress is simple. It's easy to measure the completeness of your project because all tasks and milestones are mapped out with dependencies. Accountability is clear. Each person can see when they're expected to do their part and what happens if there's a delay. Communications are easier. When everyone can visualize the project, you're able to easily communicate with bosses, clients, and team members. Everyone can review the project plan together when it's drafted and spot potential issues or areas that might require special attention. Of course, waterfall project management comes with a few limitations too, so consider these things before deciding if waterfall is right for your project. Silos and lack of collaboration. Because team members work on specific tasks in phases and hand off work to someone else, it leaves less room for collaboration across teams. Instead, it's all about getting work done to documentation and ensuring the next person in line can use what was previously created or documented. Speed to launch. When you build one thing at a time, it means you take a considerable amount of time to get just one thing done, even if you could be working on other things at the same time. Ideation. If you don't know what you want to build, waterfall project management is not for you. The idea here is to receive or create project requirements and act on them, not iterate on them throughout the process. Change and documentation. Things change in business, and when documentation is built at the beginning of a project, the project can't always change with the business without serious impact. Sometimes that impact might be to start your whole project over. So while the documentation is strong, it can serve as a risk on longer projects. Now let's break down the pros and cons of agile project management. Here are the big key benefits you'll find using an agile method. Focus on quality. Because products are built collaboratively and tested during sprint cycles, the product has many eyes on it at all times, and the flexibility of the process enables teams to pivot and make a change for the better if something's not working well. Lightweight process. Scrum offers a light framework for helping teams work together. Lower level documentation and collaboration means the focus is on rapid delivery and iteration. Continuing evaluation and optimization. The measuring and evaluating of the work and how it's done allows accurate and early visibility into the progress or even problems with a project. Plus, sprint reviews regularly open the door to gain alignment and act on feedback more quickly. Reduced risk. Agile methodologies virtually eliminate the chances of absolute project failure unless a team is just not performing well. But the fact that teams work in sprints toward releasing a working product means there's always progress. Even if that progress is open to change, a team is working toward goals set by the product owner. High stakeholder satisfaction. Because change is easy to adapt to and the process requires them to be more involved, stakeholders are more aligned with the project team and tend to be happier because they have a higher probability of getting what they want. Okay, so we've talked about Agile and Waterfall and the pros and cons to both. But what about this hybrid thing I mentioned? Like I said earlier, almost no project today is pure waterfall or pure Agile. Agile software projects still rely on larger overarching plan of some sort, at least if you want the product to be complete by a specific time. If you have a launch day that you're shooting for, a pure Agile approach won't work well because there's no hard end to the iteration process. Somewhere hidden in an office that the project teams never get to see is likely a Gantt chart that the project leader is referencing to make sure everything is on track in terms of overall timing. And that's okay. It doesn't make the project any less agile. Also, on even the most linear projects, there are almost always tasks or groups of tasks that can happen concurrently and require or at least benefit from collaboration across teams. To go back to my movie example, The writing process is usually very collaborative and iterative. It's not really important that the story be written from start to finish. Some writers enjoy having an ending in mind and backing their way into it. 
Others prefer to just have a loose premise and see where the story takes them as they write. There seems to be something of a war between the Agilists and Waterfall folks out there, but there really shouldn't be. Both of these methodologies are powerful tools to help you get projects done on time and on budget, and there's no reason they can't coexist and be used in conjunction to get the most out of your project and your teams. I'd love to hear from you, though. Are your projects mostly Agile, Waterfall, or some combination of both? Have you been hesitant to try one method over the other? Let me know in the comments, and if this video has helped you out, I'd love it if you could return the favor and hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn notifications on so you don't miss any of our videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.